Professor P. P. Ewald, a mathematical physicist, was one of the very first to work in the field of X-ray crystallography, and in fact crystal physics as a whole. In the early days of this work, it greatly needed a sound mathematical framework, which was to come from P. P. Ewald, a young student in Munich. I had originally intended to become a chemist. Then I changed to mathematics, because I found that chemistry was much too uh, unsystematic to my taste. And mathematics was systematic, but uh, after a while I found that I didn't like it too well. And then a friend of mine dragged me, so to say, in a lecture of Sommerfeld on hydrodynamics, which captured me from the very first moment. And so I stayed with Sommerfeld and did my thesis with Sommerfeld. When I came to ask Sommerfeld for a subject, for a thesis, he took out a sheet of paper on which were listed about 12 different topics in a very wide range of subjects. And quite at the end, there was a topic to find out whether you could account for the, proper, for the optical properties of crystals by assuming that there were little resonating particles which reacted on the light wave and which were arranged at different distances in different directions. And this topic really fascinated me because I had always wanted to find out something about the interior structure of the solid bodies. And so I asked him, yes. I told him, yes, I would like to take that. And he warned me, he couldn't help me very much. The other topics were more of a regular kind, and he could help me. But with this, he did not really know himself how to attack it. Well, that meant that I worked for about a year and a half before I saw the first light. And uh, then finally, by the year 1912, I had finished uh, my thesis and was writing it up. Now, in this uh, th thesis uh, on light waves in crystals, there occurred some rather uh, unexpected conclusions and I wanted to check on these with Lauer, who then was a, ju a junior lecturer at the University in Munich. And so I made an arrangement. Lauer invited me for supper at his home. He was newly married. And uh, we met at the institute and began walking through to towards the English Garten in Munich to make a detour and go to his home. On the way, I began telling him of my work, of which he didn't know anything. He was astonished to hear that crystals were supposed to be built up in a periodic way of atoms or molecules or other particles one did not know what. Uh, that was a theory which existed since, well, the middle of the 19th century and had been refined and was in a kind of final state in 1891 when Schönflies and Fedorov uh, perfected it. But uh, it was a formal theory and nobody knew what were the particles uh, which were inside the units of the crystal structure. And the next reaction of Lauer was that he asked, what are the distances of these atoms? So I told him, well, these distances, I cannot tell you. They vary according to what you assume to be the fundamental particles. But one thing is certain, they are extremely small compared to a wavelength of light. I do not remember that he mentioned the word x-rays, which might have given me a clue. But evidently, this was the moment where he got the idea that if the 
atomic distances in the crystal are of the same order of magnitude as the wavelength of x-rays, then there must be some kind of diffraction effect. As far as I know, this idea was discussed at a skiing meeting which the physicists in Munich uh, used to have about Easter in the nearby mountains and where there were a large number of physicists coming from the neighboring universities and crawling up the slopes of the mountains in a long range and a long serpent with the uh, words like integral and uh, light wave and quantum uh, uh, floating into the still mountain air where they were heavily breathing and walking up the slopes, no ski lifts at that time. And uh, Lauer's proposal of an experiment was more or less rejected, it seems. The setup for such an experiment was already because Sommerfeld was interested in the theory of X-rays and had studied the angular dependence of X-ray emission from a target. It was not uh, very much work to arrange for a beam of X-rays to pass through a crystal and to see whether any such diffraction effect occurred. Uh, Lauer and Friedrich had gone, there was a third man knipping uh, as a help to the two chief investigators, and they had gone on the assumption that the crystal would act like a reflection grating and had put the photographic plate between the X-ray tube and the crystal so that they would receive an, an outward reflection. Well, the first experiments were unsuccessful and they didn't get anything. But then Knipping, I think, had the idea of putting a plate at the back of the crystal and seeing whether they got anything there. And lo and behold, uh, there was the primary beam spot and surrounded by rather diffuse other spots. Uh, then the equipment was improved. They got a sharper definition of the incident direction and uh, their next step was to make some of the most beautiful and unsurpassed lower diagrams of crystals. That was the tr triumphal, triumphant end. I, you see, not being in, in Munich, I did not hear of the uh, lower discovery before Sommerfeld gave a talk to the Physical Society in Göttingen. I was in Göttingen uh, and uh, Sommerfeld gave this talk and showed the first pictures, and that was the first thing I heard. So uh, I sat down that night and looked up the formulae which uh, I'd already given Lauer in answer to his question was what happens if you take very short waves and pass them through a crystal? I told him, well, here is a formula which is strict. It need only be discussed for that case, I have discussed it for long waves. Uh, it's up to you to discuss it for short waves and it will give you the answer. Uh, but I hadn't done it and Lauer, of course, had not done it. So I now took up this formula and discussed it and that led immediately to a reciprocal lattice and the sphere of reflection, the usual construction. Uh, but all this was uh, still on the basis of a theory which was inconsistent in that it did not preserve energy. And uh, this was a grave fault. And you could not, for this very reason, expect to obtain good uh, intensity or significant, uh, significant rendering of the observed intensities by that theory. Meanwhile, war had broken out and had become a X-ray mechanic uh, in the army and was sent out to the Russian frontier and was situated 
not very far from Dvinsk, in a little uh, barrack uh, where I had my X-ray equipment, and no fighting was going on at the time, but there were many broken bones on account of the bad ways and roads, and so I had not very much to do. And I had a table to myself, and a room to myself. I needed the table to put the patients on, and as soon as the patients were done, I took out my papers and began working at the dynamical theory. And uh, I think without this absolute quiet and concentration which was possible during these war years, uh, 1915 to, to 18, I was almost on the Russian frontier there, uh, this whole theory, I would have never managed to, to think out this theory. The impact was enormous. Sommerfeld made the remark to my mother, this is an interesting paper, it will never find any application, but it's, a, it's very sophisticated. Well, uh, actually, it made very little impact. There were no experiments at the time on which it could be checked. The uh, Japanese and the Australian groups have developed the theory further uh, to details which I had never dreamt of, which in part are only working out the theory, but in other parts are also extending the theory considerably and especially extending the methods, so that I found a large group of people uh, who were familiar with my theory for the first time at the Kyoto conference in 1961. I'd never before been in a room together with more than, at the utmost, say, four or five people who knew even of the existence of the theory. Although the subject was discovered in Germany, it was really developed mainly in England. Uh, it was taken up by the two Braggs, father and son, uh, who had their own version of the theory, uh, especially the younger Bragg, Lawrence, now Sir Lawrence Bragg, uh, added a lot to the understanding of the whole phenomenon. And the older Bragg, Sir William, constructed the X-ray spectrometer, and they had the great advantage of working with monochromatic X-rays, X-rays which have a definite wavelength in contrast to the rays which were produced on a platinum target, which was then the normal target of X-ray tubes, uh, and which have a very wide range of wavelengths, so that they do not provide the investigator with a definite scale uh, by which to measure out the distances between the atoms. And uh, by the use of these monochromatic X-rays, Bragg's found one structure after the other, and by very ingenious and very beautiful reasoning. Uh, they published their papers in the Royal Society, but they also uh, published very soon, before the First World War, that is, a book, X-rays and crystal structure, which is one of the classics of uh, the literature and physics, it's so beautifully and simply written. Bragg, of course, had been professor in Adelaide, professor of physics, and later on in Leeds, and then in London at the University College, and finally director of the uh, Royal Institution in London. Lauer was one of the oldest among us, but he was younger than Bragg, and Bragg was Sir William was a kind of dominant and fatherly protector of the whole uh, uh, affair, and also uh, uh, the man from whom most of the ideas came at the time. Uh, this has, discovery has branched out into so many parts and is so vital for the understanding of chemistry and all its implications of biochemistry, uh, the present great problem is the structure of proteins and of other substances which are biologically 
extremely important uh, than in for the study of metals and the uh, properties of uh, plasticity of metals, fracture of metals, and similar things. Then uh, the study of catalysts, which is uh, one of the uh, important items in actual industrial chemistry, uh, has been advanced greatly through X-ray research.